Hi, in this video we'll show how to do math in Python. This is the Jupyter dashboard. It shows a folder on my computer that I've created to store some Jupyter notebook pages. Right now it's empty, but if I go into this drop down menu here I can create a new Python 3 notebook. So this here is the notebook itself. It consists of a series of cells, and the two main types of cells that we have are code cells and markdown cells. We can make this a markdown cell by selecting markdown from the menu and this makes it very useful for writing text. So I can make a nice header here that says that this is a test notebook and I can write some regular text that says that in this notebook we'll be writing writing some math. So now this is rendered nicely. We can go to insert, insert cell below, or press the insert cell below button here to add some new cells. These ones are code cells. You can usually recognize them because they have these gray boxes and they'll say in on the left side. At its most basic, Python works like a calculator. If we type in an expression and hit control enter, Python will evaluate it and print out the result. We can do addition, so 5 plus 3, and then hold control, press enter, and that will actually run the code. This tells us that 5 plus 3 is 8. We can do subtraction, 5 minus 3 is 2. We can do division, 5 divided by 3 is 1.6 repeating and we can do multiplication. 5 times 3 is 15. Python follows standard rules for order of operations. So if we do 1 plus 2 times 3, this is going to do the 2 times 3 first and then add 1 to it. But if we want, we can put the 1 plus 2 in parentheses and then multiply by 3 and that gives us a totally different answer. Exponentiation uses two asterisks. So if I do 5, asterisk, asterisk, 2, that's 5 raised to the second power. 5 squared is 25. Let's look a little more at division. 30 divided by 7 is 4 and sum. We can do integer division by using the double slash operator. 30 slash slash 7. This gives us the integer part of the previous result. If you want the remainder instead, we can use the modulo operator. This is represented with a percent sign. 30 modulo 7 is 2. So from this, we can see that 7 goes into 30 four times with a remainder of 2. For very large or very small numbers, we can use scientific notation. 3e8 is the same thing as 3 times 10 to the 8th. We can also use this to represent very small numbers. 2e minus 3 is 2 times 10 to the minus third. If we start a line with the pound symbol, that makes what we call a comment. Anything after this is going to be entirely ignored, so we can type whatever you want here. Usually we use this to explain code partway through. So here I'll explain that this is the same as doing 3 times 10 to the 8th. We can use variables to store values in memory. To do this, we use the equal sign to assign the result of a computation to a variable. If I do a equals 2 plus 3, that'll compute the sum of 2 plus 3 and store the result 5 in a. Note that when we do variable assignment, it doesn't print anything as output. If we want to see what a variable contains, we need to use the print function. That's the word print, and then in parentheses, the name of the variable that we want to display. And so now we can see that a is 5. If we want, we can also use print to display multiple things at once, and this includes text if we want to use that. So I can say a is, in quotes, and then separated by a comma, we have a itself. So now it says a is 5. We can use variables in the place of numbers in expressions. So if we do a times 2, Python knows to substitute in the value of 5 
for the variable. So this will actually compute 5 times 2 and give us the answer 10. And if we want, we can assign the result of that to another variable. We could say b equals a times 2. And since that won't actually show us the value of b, we'll need to print that out. b is now 10. When we assign a value to a variable, we are not writing an equation. The two sides are not necessarily equal. If I write a equals a plus 1, these are definitely not equal. But keep in mind that this is assignment. What this will do is compute a plus 1, and that result will get stored back into the a variable. So now if we print a and run this, it, a is now 6. It was 5, but now it has become 6 because we've added 1 to it and stored it back in itself. So now we've changed the value of a. If b is a times 2, shouldn't that mean that b is 12 now? We can check that by printing b again b is still 10. The thing to remember here is that code is always run from the top of the page to the bottom. And so at the time when we assigned b to be a times 2, a was only 5. And so b got set to 10, and it's going to stay that way until we do some other assignment involving b. We can name variables whatever we want, as long as the variable name doesn't start with a number. So we can say horses equals 10 to say that we have 10 horses. But if we try to say that the price of 12 donuts is $4.50, Python is going to complain. It says that this is invalid syntax. And this is because we have it starting with a number. If we just say donuts price, Python is now happy. And that's it for arithmetic and variables. With this, you should be able to use Python as a calculator.